for all your ultimate team coin needs, check out utcoinsforyou.com. There will be a link in the description. And if you use the code CHEZ, you can get yourself a 5% discount. Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again with another episode of the World Cup Squad Series here on my channel and of course on the Random FIFA Videos community channel as well. So as always, if you're watching on the community channel, feel free to check the link in the description to my channel or come and subscribe over there if you so wish to do so. But basically, if you're new to this series, what we do is we take a team that's qualified for Brazil 2014, we build a squad of, uh, of that particular nation, not necessarily a team of players that will actually go to the tournament, just a random 11 of uh, players from that nation that I've thrown together to, uh, to kind of score some goals with to, uh, to give you something to look at in the background although the video as a whole isn't so much about either the team or the gameplay it's more about the commentary and what we do is we go through the individual nations world cup history now this is the final group or the final uh, team rather in group c we've already covered greece colombia and the ivory coast so japan are the final team and uh, a couple of stand-up players obviously the the transferred kazuki honda you've got shinji kagawa in there and then up top you've got the informed striker whose name escapes me. I think he's Okasaki, but I'm not entirely too sure. But uh, I actually was able to borrow this team from a friend. So if you're watching this on my channel, I will leave a link in the description to, uh, to a friend of my Wheels FL. His channel link will be in the description. Go check him out and uh, say thanks to him for, uh, for letting me follow, borrow this squad, etc. But uh, anyway, let's get into the, the, the Japanese team's uh, World Cup history and to be fair much like all of the other teams in Group C actually Japan actually don't have that much of a World Cup history to scream to uh, to shout and scream about they've only qualified for four tournaments in their entire history and all of those have been the most recent four France 98 was the the first tournament they ever qualified and it actually ended in bitter disappointment they were knocked out in the group stage after losing every single game admittedly the first two games were uh, were against very good op this op very good opposition in uh, in Argentina and Croatia and they about both games actually were only uh, slim 1-0 defeats so uh, they did well there but that being said they did in fact lose the final game in a, in a shock result to Jamaica 2-1 and that's my Skype ringing in the background if you can hear that I do apologise but uh, yeah they lost 2-1 to Jamaica in the final group game which was a shock but uh, they had the perfect incentive to do much much better at the next World Cup because of course they were co-hosts in 2002 with South Korea and they did rise to the challenge the, uh, the team really did step up for this tournament they drew 2-2 with Belgium in the opening game and actually beat Russia 1-0, which is no mean feat in the next group game, following that up with a 2-0 win over Tunisia. So they did progress out of the group stage in only their second ever World Cup, although unfortunately they weren't able to keep a clean sheet in the next round, in the round of 16, and they lost 1-0 to the team that finished third overall in the, in the tournament as a whole, Turkey. So uh, they did, in fact, well, they didn't have to catch an early plane home because it was being hosted in their tournament, but in their country rather, but uh, that was the end of their World Cup dream for 2002. In Germany, 2000. 2006, uh, that brought with it another group stage exit. Unfortunately, sadly, they were uh, they were beaten quite heavily, 3-1 by Australia of all teams in uh, in the group stage, and then of course they lost 4-1 to uh, to the reigning champions from 2002, Brazil. They were actually to, able to uh, to save face, I guess, with a 0-0 draw against Croatia, a team that had beaten them previously at France 98. But uh, that was only the quote unquote highlight of that tournament, if you can call it that. But uh, they were really going to improve for uh, for the most recent tournament. Of course, the group stage at South Africa 2010 brought with it two very, very good victories over Cameroon and Denmark, 1-0 and 3-1 respectively. But unfortunately, they were beaten 1-0 by the Netherlands in the, uh, in the final group game. But they did progress through to the knockout rounds again. Round of 16, this time they were able to keep a clean sheet, but unfortunately weren't able to score. They drew 0-0 with Paraguay after 90 minutes, was still 0-0 after 120 minutes, and unfortunately Paraguay eventually ran out winners on penalties, so they did in fact have to get another early plane home after the round of 16. It does have to be said though that this time around they do have what you could probably class as their easiest group so far in uh, their World Cup history, although of course Ivory Coast and Colombia are very very strong sides and Greece can uh, pop up with uh, with a result or two if they if you know the mood takes them, but uh, how well they can do in uh, in the group with Ivory Coast Greece, and, uh, potentially Falcaulus actually, Colombia is, uh, is really really hard to predict, so I'll leave the predictions to you guys, let me know in the comments how you think Japan are going to get on this summer in Brazil, do you think they'll progress out of the group stage, do you think they'll finish top of the group, second in the group, perhaps not qualify and finish third or bottom, let me know down below, but uh, we're going to have a couple of miscellaneous uh, miscellaneous facts as we always do to round out, and uh, the most 
caps held by any Japanese national is uh, Yasuito Endo with 140 and uh, their top goal scorer is Kunishigi Kamamoto I apologize if I've butchered those pronunciations but he got he has scored 80 goals or did score 80 goals for uh, for the national team he retired quite a while ago but uh, he's now a politician in fact in uh, in Japan but uh, that's going to bring this particular episode to a close so next time we'll head into group D which is of course England's group so uh, we will be having some really really in-depth looks at, uh, at the history of England and Italy etc in the next episode but that's going to bring this one to a close so thank you very much for watching guys please feel free to leave the video a like if you could be so kind and of course if you're watching on uh, RFE feel free to check my channel in the description if you want to come over and subscribe over there for more from me I've got plenty of career mode on my team head to head stuff there's so much stuff going on over there on a daily basis uh, I think you should guys should come across and have a look at it but uh, anyway that's going to be me for today so thank you very much for watching guys and uh, I will see you next time